We're back on Fresh Waves. We're talking with Dr. Petra Hofseidel about Lyme disease. Dr. Hofseidel is a neurologist and a specialist in Lyme disease, which is, um, it's great that we have the opportunity to speak with you and find out some real facts about Lyme disease. So the tick, let's talk about this tick, the guy who causes, or the woman, because it is a the female that bites, so or that stings. The, the female is a very interesting little bug, isn't she? Yes, it is. So she crawls. She only can crawl. She can <coughs> cling firmly to an uh, animal or any kind of skin. Including a human animal. Yes. <laughs> Humans have just skin, but the hairy... Uh, Skin is can be clinged as well. Uh, yeah. can be firmly grabbed Attached. as well. Yeah, and they are really they don't have any head. So no, people get at that misconception that they have a head. No, they don't. And there have. is no head. It's no. just a mouth kind mouse of part. Yeah, it's yeah, a mouth, mouth part, part with a sting with a barbed skin, a sting. Uh huh. And then they have two little pulps. It's called in in the biological world, uh, where some Organs are the hollers organs where they can uh, feel vibrations and they can smell carbon dioxide. So if, if an animal or a human is approaching a tick, they, they realize it by vibration and uh, the smell of co- carbon dioxide. And mm-hmm. if this is close enough, they just cling to this, uh, this something which is going by because right. they know that this is... A, is something who has blood in it. And that's that, that mosquitoes do the same thing. Yeah. So it's kind of a trait of the insect world. So they, they sense your carbon monoxide and they sense you're warm yeah. <laughs> and yeah. moving. Right. And therefore, you're going to be lunch. That's, that's <laughs> true. And they belong to the spiders. So ticks belong to spiders, to the group of spiders. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Which makes them even just that more easy to hate. <laughs> no, <laughs> For me, no, I don't no. like spiders. And maybe an interesting fact is they start with six legs only when they are a nymph. Oh. So the use of the tick is called nymph and they have six legs. But then it transforms to an adult female and then it, they have eight legs. So if you want to know what kind of animal was it that you uh, uh, infected then you only have to count the legs because the chances that you are infected are higher when you are bitten, in parenthesis bitten, by a nymph. 75% of all infections are transmitted by a nymph. And the nymphs are even smaller. They're oh, like yes, much smaller. They are c- sesame seed uh, size. The size of a, s- of sesame, a seed. sesame seed. Sesame seed, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the sesame seeds are well, very well, small. Can, yeah, sure if they are. And they are small too. You can have it in the the uh, lashes of your eyes, and you yeah. wouldn't see it because it's so small. Wow, that's really tiny. It's it that makes it just harder to to find and to get. Yes. yes. Now, that's when they bite you, they don't sting like a mosquito, do they? No. They they have a, a, a barbed uh, sting, so mm-hmm. they can't re- uh, re- retrieve. Um, put back this thing anymore. They okay. Are, they are firmly attached. Okay. They can't fall off anymore. Once they have ticked in your skin, they are firmly there. And after a while, they even excrete something which is like a concrete. So it makes it even more firm. So it's not easy to take them out. Isn't that weird? It's very They're clever. very clever. Oh, they are very clever. They are very much adapted to the world, <laughs> more, much more than we are. <laughs> they are much longer on the world than we are. So if they they cling to you, how come you don't feel them bite you? They have something in their saliva which prevents it. It's a local anesthetic. They are giving to your skin, though you don't realize it. So a mosquito stings you and you feel the sting and you smack it. But a tick stings you and you don't feel it at no, all. you don't feel it and you don't get an itchiness afterwards. So it's very clever. So they are very... Hiding, highly adapted, aren't they? Mm-hmm. So yeah. you don't even get an itchy. The the tick no. bite doesn't itch. It it can happen that after they are attached, and me, even after they have fall off after their full meal, then you get an itchiness, and then you see some changes on the skin, too, that gets a bluish color or a reddish color, and if you are lucky, then you get a real erythema migrans, which is a so-called bull's eye rash, 
and then you know for sure that you are infected. That's the, the only definite and sure sign of infection, besides a lymphocytoma and besides the flu-like symptoms, which are in the beginning too. But the easiest to recognize, it's, it's a skin reaction. And so this skin reaction, if um, I know radio is one of those medias that is really hard visually, but it looks like a bullseye. It's a red center, then a, a red ring around that a few And a white in between. Yeah. yeah, and the white yeah. in between. And you can look that up online. Sure. Mr. and Mrs. Google have lots of pictures of, <laughs> of bullseye bites and different tick But bites. Don't forget that the bullseye is not always a bullseye. The erythema migrans can have many different shapes, oval or etched out, or even between, if you have it between the fingers or the tooth, you hardly can see it because it's just adapted to the anatomy. Oh, I see. So or if you have really it on sneaky. the armpit, you will not see a bullseye. You, you see something different, like a, just a reddishness. Okay. But you can have this bullseye rash, but only 40% of people get bullseyes? 40 to 60. So okay. take it 50, every second might get it. Okay. And this is already a good sign because if you have a local reaction to the infection, that, that shows you that the immune system is active. But if you don't get it, you are belonging to the group which are more prone to getting a chronic disease of it. Because right. the, the immune system is already too weak to react to that local infection. So it will be weak in, in fighting it in the immune system when it's uh, systemic. It's the same. Okay. So if you get the bullseye, it's actually probably a blessing in disguise because yeah. then you know the bullseye, does that always mean you have Lyme disease? Always. Always. Okay. There's nothing, no other disease which makes such a typical reaction. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. So the, the tick crawls on you. Yes. Finds nice soft skin somewhere. Mm -hmm. Has itself a meal, puts its mouth in you, starts <laughs> sucking your Raps blood. You. <laughs> How long can it stay on a human body? Oh, don't ask me this. It's more than 10 days we're observed that they are staying if you don't realize it. Like wow. having it on a in, in a, on a hidden place, it's and you can't feel it, and then you will not see it for a long time. And they stay as long as they are hungry, and they are very hungry. Wow! So, so my dog that I pulled a tick off on yeah. uh, the beginning, the first week of March, um, she could theoretically have had that tick on for the whole ten days already. Ten yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. Wow! Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And then when they finish drinking, they just fall off. They then just they fall, fall off. off because they are so grown in the meantime that they hardly can have a, uh, a, a sting anymore because the sting in comparison to the body is so small then yes. they really fall off. Because uh, there is a picture on Facebook, if anyone goes to my Facebook page, Brenda Masson on Facebook, you can see that there's uh, a picture of my dog's head with a tick in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's quite big. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long that tick was there because yeah. I wasn't home. Um, it was uh, tried to... to figure out how long the tick was attached by measuring the, thi the size of a tick in comparison to the head well, head part mm -hmm. and this there are some yeah some information that if it's let's say three times bigger than uh, as the origin then it's been two days and so on so they they have tried to measure it out by by this hmm. to see how long it was on on the host, and if it's been longer than one day, the, the chance to be infected is very high. So the host has to have um, the tick on them for about four hours. Minimum, then, minimum four hours. Yeah. So what does the tick do in order to give you the Borrelia? Because if they don't do it with the initial sting, like a mosquito can transmit malaria mm -hmm. in the first sting. Yeah. Well, the tick is very special, as we say, because <coughs> the Borrelia lives in the mid-gut of the, of the tick. And it's attached to the lining of the of the stomach. Mm -hmm. And as soon as warm blood from a horse comes into the tick, this lining is uh, opened more or less. So the ticks, as uh, the, the um, spirochetes start to move, and they move through the blood of the tick, which is called hemolymph. Mm -hmm. And with the hemolymph, it reaches the uh, parotid glandular. Okay. And from there, with the saliva, it will be spit into the host. Ah. So it just 
spits its stomach contents, which is kind of like barfing, into the human host. Yes. After a while. Yeah. It takes some four hours. This is gross. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, if if the tick already was about to to uh, reach a host and the the spirochetes are already in the glandula, in the parotid glandula, right? Then the the time is shorter when you can ge- be infected. Of course, it depends oh. if the spirochetes are already in the glands or in the stomach. If are in the stomach, it takes some time to to reach the glands first, and then they can be spit. So. The, the general information, you are safe the first 12 hours, that's not true. It depends on the single tick, how it is prepared or not for transmitting okay. the, uh, spirochetes. Do all ticks carry Lyme disease? No, no, no. No, they don't carry Lyme disease. They, they carry, they carry Borrelia. Okay. Spir- spirochetes. No, not all. We have, um, in general, you s- can say every third tick carries spirochetes but there are areas even in Canada which higher percentages like in Kenora they found 73 percentage of all ticks there carrying spirochetes so it's really depending where you get infected how high your risk is that you are infected okay so you can get ticks tested to find out if they in fact Carry. Have Lyme disease if you if or have Spirochetes. Borrelia spirochetes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure you can. Okay, it's but a that's method. It's called PCR. Yeah, but you'd have to get, you'd have to catch the t- the tick that bit you. Yes, that's yeah. not that's difficult because it's attached to you. Yeah, they are not fleeing. A, a they're not. Yeah, they're away. not <laughs> flying away. <laughs> Although they could fall off technically, and then yeah. you wouldn't notice. Then it. Then you wouldn't know. Then you <coughs> luckily. Then you are lucky if you get a bullseye thrush. Yeah, that would indicate that you've yeah, been but bitten. But it, it can happen that you don't realize it at all. And then out of a sudden, after, let's say, months, you start to have the symptoms. So you have to be very clever to, to bring it together with a, maybe your stay in the greens some month ago. Mm-hmm. So it, it's sometimes quite difficult and quite tricky to find out if someone has Lyme disease or not. So there okay. is a variety of symptoms which they have to have that you can be more or less sure that it's this Lyme disease. Okay, well, we're going to take our next break, and then when we come back, we'll talk about what it kind of feels like to have Lyme disease. Yes. We're talking with Dr. Petra Hofseidel about Lyme disease. You're listening to Fresh Waves. I'm your host, Brenda Masson, hey everyone, and we'll be back right Jay. after this. Join Stay me tuned. every Saturday night at 11 p.m. Eastern for The Block Party, a two-hour journey of the best in the Canadian underground dance music scene. Featuring tracks and DJ mixes from Canada's emerging artists. From the disco hits of the 70s to the latest dance floor fillers. No lineups or cover charges. It's your weekly free access to the beats that are packing dance floors in Canada and around the world. The Block Party, Saturday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern, right here on 102.9 Whistle FM and online at whistleradio.ca. We're back on Fresh. We're with Dr. Petra Hofseidel. I'm your host, Brenda Masson, and we're talking about Lyme disease. Now, we've just gone over, you get a tick where they tend to hang out on the human host and how they bite you and cling on and stay clung on for as long as 10 days if they want to have a really good feast. Um, And they reproduce. So after they've had their third meal... They're going to reproduce, and they have lots of baby ticks. Thousands. One tick can give birth to thousands of eggs. And immediately after birth, they start to grow. So they start to grow from their birthplace immediately in all directions. So what eats ticks? How are we going to get rid of these things? Is there anything that eats a tick? Do birds actually eat them? No, but there is a bee which lies their her eggs into the tick really? and then the tick from inside is dying but this is the only animal we know so far who that is, eats ticks that eats ticks or it, it damages ticks damages ticks because it uses it as its nest isn't that something yeah so they're indestructible they've been around since the dawn of time right i mean there's even fossils or some there's some sort of stones that right. have amber amber yeah. they found ticks in amber 
Isn't that buried, something? Yeah. With Borrelia in them. Yes. <laughs> oh, and my goodness. So they've been around for thousands of years. Yeah. Or if you remember the Otzi, the, the ice man from, yes, from yes. Austria, he had uh, Borrelia in his marrow. Bone wow. marrow. Yeah. Wow. So that's very really surprising. So if you get bitten by a tick that contains Borrelia, are you instantly sick? It can start within two to three days, but okay. it can stay for at least six weeks till you feel that you are becoming ill over the time more and more. But it can start immediately after the tick bite or it starts much later. So it, it's very individual. Okay, and do you get the, the bullseye mark? If you're going to get the bullseye, does that happen right away as soon as the tick it's leaves the same. you? It can be the next day. It can be after three weeks. So it's really very variable. Wow. There are no rules. You are an individual and the tick has a, its own uh, rules as well. So it it can be very variable. Well, mm -hmm. huh. so you never so can not trust like that it comes the next day and then you know for sure that it was a tick bite. No, it's not li that easy. And it's not that you can say that, okay, I have a bullseye, which means that two hours ago I was bitten by a tick. It could have been that it was three weeks days ago. ago. Or, or even weeks. years ago. Sometimes I have seen patients who came to me and they knew they were bitten years ago, but they only developed a bullseye rash after a immune depression. So uh, with another disease coming up, this bullseye rash can cr be created after many years too. So it's it shows only that the tick content, so Borrelia, can stay where the tick bite was for a long time. But on the other hand, we know that it is immediately after the tick bite in the bloodstream and it's uh, distributed in the whole body. So both is possible. So in one bite, in one feeding from a tick, it can infect you with Borrelia that goes through your whole system. Yes. So it gets into your bloodstream and just travels yeah, around. It's everywhere. Yeah. Now, how come your body doesn't just go red alert, red alert, incoming Borrelia, I'm going to kill you? <laughs> well, they dry, but <laughs> it's not so easy. Borrelia has many defense mechanisms to to cheat the immune system. So they, for example, say have a, a, a coat. It looks like a human cell, mm -hmm. so they are not attacked. It's one of the many defense mechanisms. So Borrelia are also very smart. Oh, yeah. They are the most intelligent germs we know. They have the highest genetic pool of, of many, many animals. They are really very amazing. Really? Yeah. I mean, if they weren't so destructive, they'd be kind of fun to study just because they are yeah, so sure. smart and they're microscopic. Yeah. Like you can't see them with a the naked eye, a Borrelia. No no no, 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 no. You'd have to see them under a microscope. Right. And when you do, they actually move. Yeah, in a specific way. They turn around their own axis. So, so that's a very specific way to recognize them. And they that's can't be all colored. spirochetes are like that? They yeah. spiral? Yes, that's the name. So it looks like a worm, sort of. Kind of worm, yeah. Like a spiral. Mm -hmm. Spiral worm. Yeah, it's the name comes from this form, yeah. spirochete. So the Borrelia kind of look like spiral macaroni, <laughs> only on a very, very, very small <laughs> scale. scale. Right. <laughs> And they get into your system now. Where do they go? They just hang out everywhere or do they tend yeah, to they, go to big they, joints or your they head? Move, they move actively. They have some flagelle. So these are kind of, of um, threads or how do threads, call that? yeah. No, flagelle, it's, it's the, they're where they move with. Oh, like little like legs. A propeller, like a propeller. Oh, I see. So they move actively through your body and even through, through skin and, and tissue. So not only in the, in the liquids. So they oh. can really go through uh, tissue. That's why they are moving in the skin as well. Okay. And so where do they like to hang out? Because well, you hear the different symptoms of Lyme disease. Some people feel like they have the flu. Some people have yes. the brain fog. Some people have sore joints. So would that mean that for some people they go to their heads and some people they go to their joints? Or are they just everywhere and just kind of... They are more or less everywhere, but they don't create symptoms everywhere. So okay. these are, depending on the person, on the individual, where the symptoms are created. But they tend to to be in sec recluded, secluded uh, parts of the body, like um, 
the synovia of the, of the joints mm-hmm. or uh, fat tissue or lymph nodes, <coughs> lymph nodes or any organ which is not well vascularized. Because okay. with, with the blood, the immune system is close. Without blood, the immune system can't do so much because the immune cells are uh, traveling with the blood. Okay. So the less blood in the area, the happier the Borrelia are yes. because they're staying away from your immune system. Right, right. That's a, that's a trick of them. That's To think about how they have to process that information and know that, it's staggering to think that there's a bacteria that's that smart. Yeah. And we are so helpless against them because we don't know their tricks, not all them of them. We only know a few, a few now. But it's so much more, more to be researched about if they only would do it. <coughs> well, I spoke with a man who has Lyme disease, and he's a martial arts expert. And he says that he can bring down a, a large six foot 200-pound man. <laughs> and he's so tough, and he knows all of these martial arts moves, and he eats well, and he's a big, strong man. But a little tiny tick has brought him to his knees. Oh, yes. Because he has Lyme disease and he's having a really hard time with it. And to me, it's staggering, but that was a really good kind of a a story to be able to understand how severe Lyme disease can be. Yeah. If you're suffering of it, you you know it because it's really hampering every single day of your life in many ways. And Brain sometimes fog. people don't know it. People don't know yeah, that they it's don't realize that it's Lyme, Lyme disease. They think they have arthritis or any other um, fibromyalgia or whatever they call it or MS or whatever. They have many symptoms which are similar to other diseases. And if you are not looking closely enough, you mistake it for another disease. And if you are treated, for example, for MS, then you get corticosteroids steroids Uh and then you become more ill than you can imagine because the steroids are immune suppressive and if you get an immune suppressant then your immune system doesn't any any strength anymore to fight against the the spirochete isn't that something so if you're misdiagnosed and someone says that you have ms like symptoms but they can't really pinpoint that for sure it's ms right and you're taking any of the medication that's against MS. against MS that fights MS, you're actually feeding the, oh, li- the Lyme disease. More or less, yes. Isn't that something? That makes it very tricky. Yeah. And it's a big um, duty of, of all doctors to be thorough with, with their diagnosis. Well, there is, um, there is a way of detecting whether or trying to figure out whether you have Lyme disease. Obviously, if you've got a big bullseye on your thigh, chances are you have Lyme disease. Yes, (laughs) you only have to be recognized like this. (laughs) But the thing is, because people weren't talking about it 20 years ago, you could have been infected for 20 years and not known it. Because, you know, before I remember being um, in, in my 20s, which was a while ago. (laughs) According to my children, it was when dinosaurs freely roamed the earth. But aside from that, we didn't talk about ticks in any way, shape or form, other than to say, if you ever got bitten by a tick to make sure that you took the head out, which we know now is not a head, it's actually the mouthpiece, which can sometimes be lodged in the skin if you have scratched the tick off or... Mm -hmm or just try to pull it off with your fingers. So is it still the, the way that you're supposed to get that mouth out? Does that make any difference? Mm, well, you, you could always try to get it out. But as I said, as it depends how long the tick was attached to you. If it was long enough, then you can't get it out easily. So you have to cut off more or less the mouth parts from the body of the tick easily with a razor or with a, with a string or with a tweezer. And then the sting itself comes out afterwards on its own. But the sting alone is not dangerous anymore because danger comes from the stomach of the, of the tick where the Borrelia are. And if they are already transmitted, then the sting itself, it's not a problem. Okay, but sometimes it can get infected, can't it, yes, if it's left can, in but there? but then it's like a, a, a foreign body in your, in your skin. It's like it, having it, a sliver. Yeah. 
Like yeah. it's not going to be that big of a deal. No, just no, take no. it out. Actually, your body usually forces it out on its own, doesn't it? That's right. Your body has a way of getting rid of things it doesn't like. Too bad it doesn't get rid of Borrelia. <laughs> it doesn't know how to. <laughs> it doesn't know how to. Maybe someday we'll be able to teach it. Anyway, we're going to take a little break. We're talking with Dr. Petra Hofseidel about Lyme disease. Dr. Petra is world-renowned for her research that she's done on Lyme disease, and uh, we're really privileged to have her in the studio today. I'm your host, Brenda Masson. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. You're listening to Fresh Waves on Whistle FM.